And we are now recording. All right, we are here for a public deliberation of the matter of 21-166A, John Elizabeth Martin, 1540 and 1542 South Rolling Road. Um, this was a petition for variance pursuant to BCZR 100.6 to approve fowl or poultry on uh, just shy of an acre on 0.939 acres of land in lieu of the required one acre. This is a, an appeal of a 922-21 opinion and order of the ALJ, which denied the variance. Um, we uh, had hearings, I believe, on March 9th and also on April 28th. And here we are for our public deliberation. Um, I am joined virtually by my colleagues, Deborah Dobkin and Adam Sampson. And uh, for those who don't or are not familiar with the public deliberation, there's no evidence or anything taken at this time. This is as if we were sitting around the table in the, the conference room at the board um, discussing the facts and the law as they apply to this hearing and the public would not have an opportunity to participate, though they are allowed to view as we deliberate. So, um, Ms. Dopkin was chair, but she has given me permission to open the deliberation um, with my thoughts and comments. Um, as I just stated, if this property in question was just shy of an acre. So um, if there was an acre, there were certain types of chickens and fowl would be allowed by right. By right. But since it is not an acre, um, the petitioners had to avail themselves for a variance. Um, in review of how things went through the history and procedure of this case, in, in the middle of um, this proceeding, we had the situation with the Baltimore County Council uh, passing legislation that allowed for uh, certain chickens to be held on properties that were less than an acre. Um, so in, we have the rare opportunity to see in the middle of our case, the statutory intent of the County Council to allow under strict circumstances for licenses to be applied for, for actual chickens. Um, we postponed the hearing to see how this might apply to our case, giving the petitioners an opportunity to avail themselves through the licensing process for chickens. Um, as we reconvened, it was brought to our attention that it was actually the other waterfowl, which were of more concern to the petitioners, I believe, geese, ducks, things of that sort. Um, and it is pretty much clear from our interpretation that the licensing situation does not apply to the geese and ducks, which brings us back to as you say, Jump Street, looking at the actual petition for a variance. Um, I can say right uh, from the beginning, as a fact finder in this situation, um, there was a lot of testimony that dealt at times with acrimony between the neighbors. Um, the petitioners, um, actually the owners of the property, uh, testified that it was actually their son's family who was occupying the, the premises. There had been some issues between the neighbors there, but I just wanted to put on the record that for me, factually, that is not really terribly germane to me. Um, what that means is the law is the law as to the petition for a variance. And in looking at Cromwell and his prodigy, there is no box to check on how well the neighbors get along or who did what a situation. Um, I can say that I heard the testimony of the Martins. Um, I found that their desire for these waterfowls were um, for good purposes and they had good things to say about why they had them and what benefit they provided. But the um, legal analysis for us to perform brings us back to the two prong analysis of Cromwell um, being the uniqueness and then the undue hardship. Um, as my previous discussion as to the evidence that was brought before this board. Um, we did not hear expert testimony. We were had lay testimony that also often could be sufficient, um, which was during the hearing clearly deficient as stated in the prior hearing. There was not specific testimony that rose to the level to establish, in my opinion, uniqueness, meaning how is this property different than any other similarly situated property in the zone that would then allow it to avail itself for a variance relief. Variance relief, I think, in this situation is always kind of dicey because variance relief is usually for, you know, for setbacks and things of that sort. Finding variance relief for unique property that would allow for, uh, say, waterfowl 
it, it's it's an uphill climb. Um, I would say also, if we were to find uniqueness going to the second facet for me, this is the hardship situation, though I believe that the intentions of the Martins are noble. Um, I find nothing unknoble about why they want to have this waterfowl, that their purposes are 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 good. Um, but what I do know is that it's less than an acre. And, and the Martins brought up the point, you know, if it was just a little bit more, we wouldn't be here. Unfortunately, what has been made clear to me by the county council is that they decided to deviate from that acre for very specific uses and for chickens and for licenses um, and uh, they haven't ventured into the waterfowl category so thus the strict application of Cromwell applies and in short doing that analysis for myself I find neither, neither of the prongs of Cromwell to be satisfied to allow for a variance in this situation um, I know it's it seems to be a, a strict application of the law um, but it's not an acre. If the county council wanted us to deviate from the acre requirement, they could have done it quite recently when they dealt with the other part of the law. So again, it's a unique situation where we have guidance from the council in the middle of our case. Um, and by looking at that, I, it, I am basically have to, I'm bound by the law and the law is Cromwell and Cromwell has not been met. So I defer to my colleagues. I would agree with you, um, and I think these, the ducks and geese are domestic, not necessarily, I don't know if you'd call them waterfowl, but they are ducks and geese, whatever category they fall into and wouldn't be subject to the license law, though I'm sure the council could remedy that, but they chose not to. So um, I would concur. Mr. Sampson, sir. Yeah, I concur for the reasons you said, and I, I just have a, a another point. Uh, the, the ALJ had pointed out that this is a rental, and there there were concerns even if you were to find uh, otherwise than, than how you've just articulated it, it'd still be a problem with uh, having a covenant or variance run with the land on a rental. And I was curious if, if you agree with that. Uh, and then my other point would just be that uh, Creating one's own hardship doesn't you know, provide a basis for the variance. And I think that applies here as well. I, Ms. Sampson, very interesting uh, legal point. And I, I didn't go there because I don't know where to go there because I would say in the circumstance of, a, say, a variance of a setback or something like that, it definitely would run um, because we're dealing more with a, a use than rather a condition. Um, there's a strong argument that it would not run. So I'm going to say, since I don't have to rule on it and make bad law, um, that I'm not going to at this time. I, that's just my thought on the matter. But I think that's a very interesting issue. And I think the issue would be different because we're dealing with more of a use variance than we are dealing with an actual physical condition uh, in zoning. So uh, I'm not going to go there unless you feel we have to. No, I don't. Uh, I just I wanted to bring it up because I had read it and it, and it was interesting to me and you, you addressed part of it. The other part was the idea of a rental property can and someone who rents property. I mean, this this is not academic. We don't have to address this and maybe we just do this offline. But can someone who rents property actually obtain a variance as opposed to the owner of the property? I mean, you're you're talking about use and maybe that would provide an option, but. I just found that to be interesting. I agree. It does, it's not required for the finding because the, they don't meet the two prongs for the, the reasons that you said. Uh, but I, I do use these uh, cases and these deliberations not only to address what must be addressed, but I need to learn. And uh, and I thought those were good points that the ALJ raised. But again, I'm I'm getting and off. And it's inter interesting because a license is personal to the licensee. Yeah. And that really would address the concern because the license would end when the uh, people move or stop renting. Yeah, and right. so we're back to, to the, the county council's intent by specifically 
making this determination with regard to chicken, and they certainly could have done so with respect yeah. to waterfowl or specifically something called geese or chickens, and, and I mean, geese or uh, ducks and chose not to. And I think that is a very important point that Mr. Bell pointed out. It's it's a hybrid. It's like a, a hybrid type of, it, it, in any event, we since it is a hybrid, it, it could uh, set bad precedent, I would say. So, um, since I think we we are set on the Cromwell analysis, I think we will call it a day at Cromwell, and uh, that's what we will do. And um, I like to thank again the participants, both the petitioners and the protestants, and how they conducted the hearings before this board. Neither had counsel. Um, both uh, sides presented their case. I thought very well, um, and that type of respect for the process is is well appreciated by this board. Thank you, Mr. Bell. All right, folks. So, um, Mr. Sampson, I think I'll see you later. Ms. Yes, sir. Ms. Dopkin, I shall uh, see you next time. Thank you. Thank Have you. a good uh, rest of the day. All right. All right. Thank you both. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.